Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Manson Saga discussion panel. I'm Paul. That over there is Danny After Dark. Like and subscribe. And down there, ready for Sub Zero Combat, is Mr. Beckham. And uh, tonight, we're going to be going over more of the, uh, I guess, more of the little hinted mysteries of the uh, of the Manson Saga. So. Yeah, before we go, Danny, would you like to say hi to everybody and go over some points that you wanted to go over? Yes, so hello, everybody. Welcome. And let's see who we have here. We have in the chat, of course, Mr. Beckham's in the chat being a hoe. We have <laughs> Linda, Ooh. James Watson, Mr. Jinx, Lisa, Hazelnut, Anastasia, Azriel, hello. <laughs> Michael McCulley, Ariel, Sietti, uh, Acapella, uh, Capone, Russell, I think I saw it. Courtney, hello, uh, Linda Carroll, 4708, Corey Novak, hey, Nick Norris, uh, Renee, hello, uh, Wade, I think I got everybody. If I missed anybody, my apologies. You need but a little welcome. bit more Happy um Thursday. for Russell. You need a little bit more energy. Russell? He's, Russell's here. Rick Franz. Okay. Looks Hi, like Russell. Franz. Hey, James <laughs> Dawson. Rick and James, hello. Oh, thank you, Linda. So, yes, last episode, we kind of thought it would be a one-parter, to be honest, on some of the points that we mentioned, but the hey, Wag stuff the conversation that we were having and then especially with you guys in the chat, like we really, really got into it. So there's still a lot more that we wanted to cover. So hence why we're here for part two, because there's still more that needs to be discussed. Right. And we didn't even really like, and I didn't even do any more homework while like you, while we were off towards that. Now something else, absolutely. And I'll get into that momentarily. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Hey, look and, at my uh, comment. Where, oh no, I don't know. Where before we is. take a nose dive, before we take a nose dive, or yeah. before Paul does, yeah. um, for anybody that missed, um, who's not subscribed to Danny After Dark, I had Mr. Beckham on with me on Tuesday night, and we did a review of the Netflix Jeffrey Dahmer um, miniseries documentary. So check that out. Paul was supposed to be with us, but unfortunately, he was sick. So mm -hmm. we had a blast without him. So yeah, if you it missed good. it, check it out. It went really, really well. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. what else? Hey, Richard. <laughs> Other than that. She hasn't so, seen it yet. Yes, Paul. I'm waiting for you to eat crow. Yeah, right. So part of the fun of this game is when you're wrong, you get to come up and be like, hey, I have no idea what the fuck's happening. This is a weird one for me though, because usually like, cause I'm on, I'm on people who are, who just throw shit out there. I don't think it's, I don't think it's responsible. And so, um, when, so I was looking into, because I've been going over everything again. I've been like, I've been wanting to know where did I get that information from? Can I, is there two places that I can find that this is from. And are they like, you know, so-and-so Joe Bloschmo's fucking book, or is it like a document or like, you know, something more, something with a little more. Um, and so like this is, and I swear to God, I wasn't having a stroke. I didn't smell burnt toast or anything like that. So for a while, the last while and I even looked I even looked at messages I sent about it. So back in November of 2021, I was asking about these I was asking about these stab wounds. And we had talked on a show and other people remember it too. So that's why I don't feel like it was a complete hallucination. But I had said like wholeheartedly that I thought I got it out of the uh, autopsy report. But I read the autopsy report a couple times today and it was not in there. So I was looking around a little bit and I couldn't find it easily. That's for sure. So um, I thank you, uh, Bo from CLOdrive.com. I was like, do you have any idea which of the 
um, trial transcripts is the the they're talking about the autopsy reports and he sent me the links so i have to go through those because there are a lot of pages in there it serves me right for just fucking just look for like just look for, just kind of skim and look for like when they if they're talking about handed like right handed left handed well i am and and oh, okay. it talks about each victim right okay, there so you go. i'm it'll be so i'm going okay, so through you, and i'm going to look through the you'll sharing be able to condense it. it you'll better condense the okay good yeah so um <laughs> aliens though cia it was a hundred percent the cia no but it doesn't but it doesn't matter i don't give a fuck if i'm wrong about something how the fuck do you learn about anything if you're not wrong um but yeah so i'm going to look into that and other than that, I have no fucking idea because usually I don't. No, I got. Just yeah, like, I've heard I don't it before gnaw too. Gnaw onto something right. like that, right? Yeah, that's right. not my. That's not my mo. And so I'm just. I'm really interested to figure out where it's from. The funny thing too is, and the last time this happened, it took so long for me to figure out, and it was uh, talking about, um, and I took the the whole fucking episode down. Um, we were talking about Susan LaBerge or Susan mm. LaBerge and uh, we were talking about her taking money from something from the safe or from this that or the next thing and uh, and we were like yeah it was in the police report and I love that this is how it ha Tom O'Neill goes where <laughs> where no, no hold on a second hold on report. okay but it but, came but back no, around no 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 but, okay. but then when it came back around because at first I was like I read through the police reports and I kept reading and I was like, well, fuck me in the face. Apparently I'm having a, a stroke again or before a pre-stroke. Like and subscribe. Whatever. Like and subscribe. Oh, that um, kind of stroke. I thought you were talking that about kind of stroke. <laughs> oh. right, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. I'm and sorry, then dude. I had a, yeah. Damn, Daniel. And then it turned out Jeez. later on that it was this audio clip. But it was a hard to find audio clip. So I'd heard it. Somebody had told me about it. That was. But then. Uh, you know who told then, you? <laughs> well, no, no. But I mean, oh, like, okay. it's because yeah. lots of people had talked about right. her taking money from something, right? Sure. But I was like, I don't know where. I don't know where I heard it. And then we get the audio clip of the uh, Sergeant Knuckles, who was, right. which is his real name which is fucking amazing. Um, That's hot. But he's... <laughs> yeah, it reminds <laughs> me of Sonic the Hedgehog, but it's because I have until a kid. You see him until you saw him in real life. But he, but he said... But yeah, we have the clip there, which we can actually play for you guys. Um, it's talking about Susan LaBear's going to her mother's store and taking money out of the cash register, being ordered to put the money back by this officer after the fact it does sound like a mafia gangster name what is this dude oh okay that we're going a little off the beaten Wait. path but so back to the comment of the autopsy where you thought you saw it in the on read it in the autopsy. oh yes so that's so yeah back to it back to me being wrong um the <laughs> <laughs> Daniel just wanted you to say that. I was he not gonna fell for it. You fell for it. No, dude. it's good. I'm so Thumbs I'm play. so glad. No, it's really good because this is <laughs> uh, I've always I've never ever been scared to be wrong about stuff. I've been like if you I think it's fucked if you dig in afterwards and start to just go like no or try and like dodge being wrong. I, that's so weak and just ridiculous. So when I find the information, if I find the information, I guess, I will let you guys know where it came from. I'm being far better about keeping an eye on where I get my information from now because this is a pain in the ass. So this is like a 75% retraction, basically. Yeah, because, I mean, there's multiple people have a, like remember remember that episode that we had read something about it because i yeah anyway so when i find out i will let you all know 
it's tough to go through and like, <coughs> excuse me, listen to old episodes and find the exact points of stuff. Like, anyway, if any of you happen upon it, let us know. And uh, if not, I will be scouring the pages of things and then just be like, well, fuck, I have no fucking idea after that. But for now, <laughs> anytime I've mentioned that, just uh, take it with a grain of salt for now. Or I was going to say, people, if you find it, message it to me and I won't tell him and we'll see how long he searches. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> the worst. All right. So let's continue with um, what we kind of did last time. We have some great points to go over. But sorry, side note, before we do that, hey, <clears throat> about the docs, hey, fiddle. <laughs> Clay, yeah. everybody knows Clay. Yeah. Oh, I'm just kidding. Um, hey, Troy. Uh, so I think it was the uh, trial transcript. But allow me to fucking do my uh, do my work, and then I will get back to you on both of those. So for now, let's strike the whole fucking thing from the record, because I am just, I have no idea. No idea what the fuck. And I don't think it was just a fever dream or anything like that, so. Yeah, Paul's been sick, so let's give him, like, a little leeway. Yeah, that same Knuckles. Same knuckles. Hey, Morbid Punk. Um, so yeah, so that's the the first thing, first order of business. Um, and I'll put out posts. Well, I have put out posts about it, but I'll I'll keep you guys informed. And then we'll go. Then yeah, we'll move along. Where the fuck is anything on my phone? Here we go. Well, then I'll start with one of my points. Oh, all right, go for it. So one of my points, a reason that we need to take a closer look on the case. Hey, Tony, um, is one of the things is, which I did not know until I read Blood Family, which is written by one of the jurors. Um, Paul, do you have that book handy? You can quickly show it. I see it right there at your shrine. Yes. Blood Family. Which... Amazing, amazing book. So in that book, again, it's written by one of the jurors and the whole issue of Paul, you know, I'm going with this, where the mm -hmm. um, jurors were quote unquote sequestered and by sequestered meaning not. So were they, you know, separated in a hotel that they had to stay at? You know, yes. However, they were allowed guests. They were allowed guests overnight and it got to the point where, you know, at first it was like, oh, my spouse. But then, you know, some people were like, well, wait a minute, just because I'm saying I want my hairdresser to come in. I want this. I want a one night stand like for real. And these people were having guests over. And the point of being sequesters away so you're not influenced in your verdict of the trial and all these outside people were coming in and you know good and damn well that there were conversations happening behind the scenes. Is the guy going to write it and say it? No, but it just blew my mind. How can you have a, a jury that's supposed to be sequestered when they're not? It right. was just, and they were allowed to talk on the phone to the point where the calls weren't being monitored. Yes, a guard, if you will, a police officer was near, let's say, the juror while they were on the phone. But you don't know what's being said to them on the other line. So there was just so many instances of, wait a minute, wait a minute, this is outrageous. And I did not know that till I read that book. So that was pretty damn shocking. Um, Paul, do you have any comments on that? You, you have the book in your shrine, so you've read it, I assume. Yes. <laughs> yes, I've read it. And yeah, it was interesting. It was interesting to have that um, that perception of the of the case. Because you don't really get to see, you don't really get to see things through the eyes of a juror. It would have been neat if there had been multiple books by the jurors, but there's just this one, and so it's uh, <laughs> it's a tasteful historical display. Thank you, Richard. But that's yeah, that was one of the one of the most shocking things in it. 
they all started to get real squirrely after a while. That was really interesting too. Like almost got in a fight with one of the guards. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And kind of going off of that, no, Doug, you're right. There was one of the um, uh, jurors was having an affair and yeah, that the book goes into that. Like the Williams, uh, William Zamora <coughs> the author. I'm totally blanking. his name. Um, yeah, he doesn't hold back with writing about the other jurors. Um, so that was interesting, but he also, one of the things that we've talked about on the show previously, and it gets mentioned in the book is the newspaper in court. Mm -hmm. We all know that mm -hmm. when Nixon declares Manson guilty mm -hmm. and that newspaper was showed in court mm -hmm. and the juror writes about that. We all know mm -hmm. that should have been a mistrial right away. But he talks about the juror from his perspective of when they saw it and how the judge was like, wait a minute, is this going to influence you? No. Okay, great. Continue. And it just it blows my mind. Blows yeah. my mind. But So we've heard about that, but to read it from the juror's perspective was really, really interesting. So, And what a fantastic segue. Because after... Nixon declared Manson guilty in the press. His his guy, whatever, um, his his press his press guy put out a statement, just like you know, doing damage control, being alleged, blah blah. blah. And then later on, when the uh, when the Watergate scandal happened and the uh, tapes from the Oval Office came out. This happened. So hold on one sec here. This is another thing that's just like, holy shit. Why look into this uh, case a little bit more? Because of this. Play. Yes. That is, that's just a wild one. Now there's, there's different ways you can, well, there's not really different ways you can interpret that. There's, I was going to be like, well, you can be like, he was just kind of flexing being like, I knew what was going to happen. So I did it because I thought it needed to be done. But he's like, they were so worried about the Manson case. Who the fuck was worried about the Manson case? Who's worried? Who's they? And yeah, William Eddie, that's me. <laughs> oh shit. God bless America. <laughs> you know what's crazy? The way I look at it is I if I I mean I was not around back then because I'm only 21, so I was not I was not born yet back at that time. So um no, but if I was and I, this came <clears throat> out and I heard it. I would be like, 
what the fuck we've been lied to we've been deceived like we need to take another look at this but i think because it's charles manson so many people heard it, it might be like uh eh, but you know it's charles manson so we'll let it go it's almost just like that behavior was okay because well, of who the, it was. i'd never even i'd never heard this it took a long time for me to hear this it took a long time to find this Mm -hmm. and so it's not really out there it's just like one of those one of those regular things that's that really puts a wrench in the in the operation but is nowhere to be found when anybody's talking about it like good point yeah the cigar tapes <laughs> i was reading the thing on the side they're like um all right but i challenge you back Okay. So now it's now it's here. If you're, you know, into the Charles Manson case, you know, you hear it now and whatnot, and you know, you mention it to people that you know, and the general kickback response is still, oh, well, that was Charles Manson. So it's kind of like, well, he didn't just, you know, he mm -hmm. was, you know, the most evil man on the planet. Doesn't matter that what Bugs did. Doesn't matter about this tape. He was put away, so on and so forth. At least that's how it is from my perspective. Right. There's still that, like, yeah, but it was Manson. It really, yeah, it is. Ah, it's crazy. And it, you know, regardless of, of how much stuff Manson was doing, if he went to prison just for the stuff that he did, that makes, or that they could prove he did, but then that just opens it up. If they can do that to him, they can do it to anybody. Mm -hmm. They can and have done. There's lots of people who've gone to prison wrongfully. The thing with Manson is it's sticky because he was doing a ton of illegal shit. And like uh, we had talked about with um, last last week, like, and Dennis had thought that too, is like he had been busted for a bunch of really dumb shit. And people are like, oh, what a stupid criminal. But it was kind of more like what well, he was getting busted for this tiny thing he had in this hand when the real moneymaker was this side of it. Mm -hmm. um yeah i yeah. think that that applies anyway um so that i found really interesting and then what's next on our lists what do you have do you want to go on your list now and tell us what you got next danny um, so another point that i wanted to so we briefly talked about so i guess my general note was all instances of mistrial and we touched upon a few of those but you know for those who are looking back on the case again there were just so many instances where there should have been a mistrial and this should not have gone forward like point after point after point after point after point yet it did so um and then my last note so my note number four um is how the the crime scene was handled, how the police handled the evidence, which was extremely poor. And again, we, we don't get a real picture of what happened. We're left to try to figure that out. We just did a show recently where um, we brought up pictures of the blood and, you know, where some points were where stabbing was, but bodies were moved and so on and so forth. If the police did their job properly, we should not be sitting here 50 years later, over 50 years later, trying to figure out who might have been stabbed where, what happened here, evidence here. Oh, evidence is missing. This doesn't make sense. It, it, it should it should be solved. It should be solved on that end. But then I also take a step back and think this was such a covered up case. Could the police have done a little bit more right and we're just not getting that information. Why did Charlie play into Bugs' story so perfectly? It's not so much that he played into his... Man, they they compress so much stuff. Bugs is a fucking fantastic lawyer. He used lots of half-truths. He used lots of lots of stories that, that weren't necessarily lies, but they were mixed together with other stories. He's and, a great manipulator great manipulator and so when 
Manson had the thing going on of like, if you get busted, play crazy. So they all played crazy like they normally did. But it just, like you say, it just played right in, played right in. But it's another thing of like, were they trying not to get busted for something else while they were get busted for this? If they get busted for this, that's fine. But they're fucked if they get busted for, you know what I mean? Um, let's see here. Hey, Otis. Yeah, I mean, especially in this case where, again, the one cop, you know, who could have stayed outside to guard the crime scene, not only was inside, but slept like on, on the evidence, <laughs> there's blood everywhere. And you're in there sleeping on evidence, basically outrageous. Back I know you, you've brought that up time and time again. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Just like the OJ case, they went home with evidence in the back of the seat of their car and the, the wrong, the, except in the OJ case, you had some badass lawyers to fight against the prosecute, you know, the prosecution. And they they found out and they went with that and they went with a whole other alternative, right? Which with history, we know what happened. And that and if Manson would have had the right lawyers at the right, you know, in the right time, it would have been the same thing. Same thing would have happened. But he unfortunately, but he didn't. So right. Right. I was gonna say unfortunately, but I didn't say that. But you know what I mean, like yeah, because it would have be, well because it, it was the you know the it kind of was an embarrassment for the justice system down the road when the truth has come out that the that the district attorney's office committed perjury and did all those things to line up mm -hmm. to get their conviction, right? So yeah. it's just an Bugs. embarrassment to the to the judicial system and to the to the, all the law enforcement and everything. So I mean, Bugs the got community. Bugs got uh, Bugs got pulled up for uh, leaking information to the press and like just all sorts of shady stuff, which isn't like I don't think it's like it's singled out to Vincent Bugliosi. I don't think that it's like he's the only lawyer who does stuff like that. It's just he's the one. Who no, did but it. I mean, just an, uh, I just sent you something from from where. Uh, it's probably from a somebody's uh, I'm sorry from one of the books Susan wrote or something where she states she's left-handed oh okay I mean, you can just from? read the quote the, the the actual quote from a book or I'm not sure which book it was but I'm gonna have to find this I walk down the hall to the far bedroom yeah. is this Courtney I love you yeah Courtney, Courtney sent thank us, you sent, yeah Courtney Courtney sent us sent it to us Okay, I walk back down the hall to the far bedroom where a man and woman were talking. Only this time I burst into the room with my knife thrust out in front of me. I surprised them and they seemed rattled. Come with me, I said eventually. Don't say a word or you're dead. Walking behind, I herded them down the hall. Take them into the Folger woman's bedroom. I ordered her to follow. I held the knife menacingly in my right hand, although I write with my left. And my costume and bold manner obviously intimidated them susan atkins and that's a post from uh june 24 2019 well and yeah but, it's, but but it's coming from a book well, that she wrote it's one of one her, of her books yeah right so thank you uh, that's awesome so that's one part of it that i'm i'm not totally fucking crazy on um damn it and maybe maybe you read it somewhere like that, right? Where, um, right. And it just in your own mind, Paul, it spun around. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I'm. I'm like, holy fuck! It did do like a tilt. It went on. Dude, a tilt maybe, maybe you got that little part out of it, right? And you're like, it had to have been her. It's like she's left-handed. I'm From not sure. From which We're not book? Sure. We're not sure yet. Yeah. So that one is off of a post on. I'll I'll figure it out. I'll get back yeah. to you. Probably the last one. The first one was so fucking full of shit. It should have had a brown cover. Fucking. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Jesus Christ. Uh, and that's the main thing. It's like, that was horrible. None of this looking into it means that we thought any of these people deserve to die or that any of this is good in any way, shape, or form. This is a horrible thing. It's just, mm -hmm. we're looking at it. Um, Jay Sebring should still be with me. I mean, with us. Okay. 
What? He'd be like super old with all that cocaine he was doing. He would have had a heart attack. Imagine like, she, at, like at 55, dude. You're crazy. He would have had a heart attack she before lied. you were born. Right. Imagine she lied about being left handed too. She just couldn't fucking. Well, I mean, that's true, but you never, I mean, that is, that's true. It's really tough. It's really fucking brutal. That's a really brutal thing. Um, yeah. Is, I think. I think Paul saw that and it twisted up in his mind. <laughs> we'll see. He, yeah. he must have had a dream about it. Um, so James is asking a question that goes a little bit back to my point about the crime scene not being preserved correctly. And yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. This one, the, that, that picture that we showed last time of the blood on the uh i guess if you're standing at the door it was on the right hand side that was apparently jay's jay's blood type danny's still interested in his wanger forever i'm interested in sebring as a person dude are we even for sure that the blood stuff is even done correctly I mean, that's but that's going above and beyond. In the, in the <laughs> yeah, it's like, like, what if they like actually got it wrong or, or even got that that switched? That's a show for another day. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's lots of there's different speculations of what was happening, why they were killed on the front steps, and then it's like, why were they brought inside, and then why were um that's the other two real. killed outside <laughs> Not, nothing right? to like, kill that bastard it's uh there's lots of speculation but the the thing that's not speculated is the blood types and where they were and how much of blood was where and like in the in the it was i read the autopsy and the crime scene report today so in one of the autopsy or the crime scene report they talk about sharon having been moved because there were blood smears on her that um that rent that were what's the word I'm looking for, Danny? Consistent. It just means she, they were consistent with her the body having been moved. That's Thank what we're you. looking for. That is the word That's for this what we're case. We're trying we, to. That is the exact word needed for this case. It's trying to find some consistency within anything of it, with you know, in yeah. the case. You're right, <laughs> Mr. Backham, and there's always consistency that I'm gonna boot you from this show. Ah, uh, but it's consistent. All right, that Paul brings me back. That ebbs every time. Here, Robin. All right, I'll be right back. I have to get a glass of water. I'm gonna cough my head off. Me too, yeah. Danielle. Plug the show. <laughs> I'll be back. Oh God, it's about to get so much better with these guys all gone. Okay. Yes. Um. Thank you, Beers. Paul just proved Danny is the brains of this operation. Exactly. Exactly. So, yes. Um, I know some of you guys are referencing the um, blood uh, that was found outside and on the porch. And I'm hoping when Paul gets back, he has easy access to those photos. So we can go ahead and bring that up so we can um, just take a quick look at it. Because, again, there's so many... So many aspects we can look at it from the outline of the blood, how much blood is where, and yeah, there's a lot we can go ahead and talk about that. Um, again, while the guys are gone, just another quick plug for um, some people have been coming in the show in the chat at different times. Um, for anybody that missed it, um, on Danny After Dark on my channel on Tuesday night, me and Mr. Beckham did a live, a review of the Jeffrey Dahmer Netflix. Um, series so check that out if you missed it it was a lot of fun the conversation that happened in the chat what was going on it was really really great um so yeah and we got a uh, somebody else wants us to do a review of um the richard ramirez one so stay tuned me and mr beckham will be on that otherwise okay i see mr beckham message beckham for christ's sakes <laughs> It was a good stream. Thank you, Corey. Hey, Eric. Welcome. How you doing, hon? Okay. Uh, Anastasia says, to an earlier show question, I thought Tex admitted to cutting Sharon's face. Hey, Hazelnut. 
Oh God, James. No. That's something that's up Beckham's alley. No, it's not. I I've, I mean, <laughs> don't even get me started on the on the on the, on the English. You know what? Paul should do that because technically yeah. in Canada he loves the Queen. They, yeah, they're Canadians under, they're under love the, the, queen. the Queen. Right. If it was up to me, we would take over England. <laughs> Life according to Beckham. And just put well, they they already have. I mean, we're we're still basically their military now. I mean, I know they have a military, but they're, we're everybody's military. Mm hmm. All right, so Capone says, blood in the bushes is Sharon's. Her hair ties were there, too. Do you want to read what my, what my, well, what my doctor person said about the blood? You want to reread that? I don't have it handy. Hold on a second. I mean, I can get it for you. If you I mean, I don't know if you wanted to read it or not, but. Uh, yeah, we'll pull it up. We'll take a look at it. This is. Or you can give it. You can read it if you want. I'll give it Where's to Dan. The... Well, I'll just put it. Okay, let me. I'll put it in the thing. Now, I I did reach out to a real doctor. I did not bring up the reason why I asked the question, or else cause you can't do that. And a matter of fact, I was. You know, they were like, "Why are you asking about this? Why? What this? Why? What particulars are? Why are you asking about it? Because of course, I'm not in the medical field, mm -hmm. or I don't investigate murders." <laughs> but uh but uh I had to give them another reason it was, it was part of another case I was working on and they kind of they kind of laughed about it but you should have just said I have a friend named Danny who's really into some sex it, it was almost like a like yeah right kind of laugh right like while I was right. asking particulars about the blood stuff um Shit. I'll be right back all right Let Daniel it, okay. here's what yeah, here's I'm going to I'm going to post what was sent and you can read it. OK, waiting Hold for on one second. Come. All right. Now, this is about the, you know, about um, the establishment of the timeline and what happens to, you know, the, the bodies and the blood and all that kind of stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Hold on one second. Let me get it over there. Capone, I. Here you go. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. All right, so the and this is about the bodies, uh, the, you know, decomposition, <clears throat> the decomposition, the timeline, the what happens, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so internal temp does help, but it may not be that reliable. There's so much time that goes by as the heat leaves the body and rigor mortis starts to set in. Body temperature drops 1.5 degrees for each hour after death. But body temperature is actually one of the least reliable methods of determining time of death because of variables like outside temperature. But if the body is warm without rigor mortis, the death occurred about three hours or less. Warm and stiff is about three to eight hours. Cold and stiff is eight to 36 hours. Cold and not stiff over 36 hours. Investigators... We'll use a variety of factors other than temperature to determine time of death because temperature isn't that reliable. They'll look at the eyes, decomposition, rigor mortis, and blood drying. And that was for the bodies that were out, you know, that were outside as opposed to in, you know, inside the temperature. And I asked specifically why, like the temperature outside, since it was hot in the, in August of '69, it was extremely um, out of the norm, hot for them at that time. And all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it, it can be if even just by that, what you just read can really it's still is, I mean, it's still kind of difficult, right? When you think about it, everything that they that he said in that in his response to the question. So you had bodies outside in the crime scene, you had bodies inside. When were they moved? I mean, mm -hmm. it is more than a calculus three physics equation if you ask me to try to figure out the proper timeline and police had one job and at that one moment in that specific you know the next morning to get it right and you could not anything would have triggered this to go the wrong direction as far as figuring out the correct timeline of course danny you talked about it earlier a police officer slept on the crime scene the police officers that showed up to the crime scene 
kick the boot of the, uh, the gun in the living room across the floor. I mean, it just seems like they were just over. They were they were probably just overwhelmed. I don't I don't I don't even know what it, I mean, what excuse to make for it, because they're used to crime scenes and all that kind of stuff. They should have been. That's <clears> right. It was, you know, it it was during a heat wave right. too. So that then um, that's another and that's a, that's that that's a particular question I asked for this answer because of the bodies being you know the, the the bodies being outside as opposed to the ones inside right so mm -hmm. as you can see the difficulty in trying in the you know trying to figure out the timeline uh, <clears throat> of of that of that night for that for that case yeah yeah, Manson had said he'd met Sharon a couple of times. Makes sense. Wilson, Dennis Wilson Same was like in the scene with everybody. Same with, um, well, as we know now, um, Nancy, who has True Crime and Moonshine, who you guys should all go and uh, go and like and subscribe. Um, she had been going through Mama Cass's um biography and found out that she was fucking engaged to billy doyle and that those guys were way tighter in the scene than just like you know she was hitting up a couple of them that's that's a different story being engaged yeah. to somebody and there's right. still no fucking pictures of them and like just yeah. crazy um but anyway the so i could have met through there the the whole scene was really small. The party scene was really small. And there's there's lots of different stories, which some of them are probably just stories. But yeah, some people like uh what's Neil Neil Young? Neil Young still talks about how he uh how he met Charles Manson and how he uh was trying to get him signed to his label. And Doyle was a talent manager. There are none. There are fucking none a cappella. There's no photos of Doyle anywhere. Is he the one whose dad was Canadian intelligence? Hey, I thought that was Dawson. Or that's right. I'm sorry, that's Dawson. You're right. I think he said both of them could have, but he got he said yeah, he said he got information from somebody that uh Phillips I'd have to look for the exact spot in the Manson file there. Um, but he talks about Phillips going over to the house that night. I still think it was a it was a double cross mainly. I don't know. But I, that's that's yeah, I me know. though. But yeah, I don't doubt the drug dealing. The motive, uh, something to do. I uh, it just has something to do with robbery. They got me. double. Somebody got double cross and and got screwed over on the deal. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the he's still, like yeah, drug burn, right? Like that's what you're talking about, drug burn. Um, okay, so then, what else are we? Is there anything else to add to to that part of it? Um, no, just the. So in regards to the crime scene, well, since we're talking about Cielo Drive and that prop just kind of segueing, um, one thing that is worth taking a closer look, and this is something that we've been recently talking about because of Mr. Beckham, is the trails. Right. Yep, the trails. And thank you for um, giving me credit. There's, I, yeah, it and so means me. It means me the i don't first... often take credit but i will tonight and that well, just the... wasn't mr beckham he went with sadie sadie Earp, and she yeah. put out some great videos on her yeah, channel she, of she that did. so yep. and there's and it there's the trails neat... that are still there mm -hmm. it was a neat um it was a neat progression getting to knowing that the trails were actually a thing because beckham had that that had stuck in his head out of 
think it was Neil Sanders. Neil book. Sanders' book, uh, man. So he talks long about, ago. Yeah, he talked and, about these two guys that were hooking up. Well, eight, eight, he's and, supposedly an 18-year-old and, like, and a 25-year-old or whatever. But. Yeah, and you're saying something about the, uh, yeah, about the, in the trail. And it was just like, that's so weird. Like, what well, fucking trail? Well, I would know, and but then, I was like, well, where could they have been hooking up? And they heard the whole thing come, They what they heard was the like yeah. fighting and screaming and all kinds of stuff. So they got scared because one of the guys was married, right? And they freaked out and they took off running. And I'm like, where are they running to? Like, where did they go? Or, you know, they weren't on the road. Yeah. They weren't on the main road. Right? No, because you're just saying what a, what a, right. It just funnels to that one spot. If there was yes. no other exit, it just right. funnels to and I'm like, that where, gate. I'm like, where the hell could they have been? Yeah, that where were they going to the backyard? They're trying to ju- go around the back of the house. Just <laughs> they like they would have got killed. Them out. They would have, yeah. yeah, right. They would, dude. You had all these people on high, uh, high as fuck, man. They would have caught anybody, dude. You had young, you had like twenty-year-olds, right? That on high on speed, they would have caught up. They would have caught anybody running with knives, right? They weren't and gonna. So, they weren't gonna unless you were like an, a super act. Unless you're an athlete, like you were gonna maybe you could have maybe outran them, but not a not a normal. No, and who knows what sort of damage they had when they were running too. Yeah, right. Like that's a that's the whole other thing. But the uh, so the trails, the as it went on, it was it started out in that book, and then um, Mr. Beckham had gone and looked. It's like well, it looks like there's a fucking trail there, and it talked to Sadie Atkins or Sadie Atkins, Sadie uh, Atkins, Sadie, Sadie Herp. She came and, from the uh, dead. <laughs> uh, which you can like and subscribe her channel as well. Um, Sadie but, Earp, not Sadie Atkins. Right. Yeah. No, don't like and subscribe her. No. Um, but the, uh, but the oh, trails, real quick, saw well, some of the trails and also I, found out that they were there because of fire escapes. Go ahead. Matt. Right. Just real quick. And we talked about this, but Ariel brings up a great point. If you look at this, if you look at pictures where the bodies were found outside, I always mm-hmm. wondered as an investigator myself, mm-hmm. a real investigator, not a chair, armchair one. But yeah. I always, I always, I had to throw that out there for the, the hater people. But um, hater I always thought about hater baiters. Uh, yeah, I always thought about why Folger and Wojtek were on opposite directions if they ran like they were running to get away, of going towards the cars. Right? I'm like, why were they over there? It now makes sense with the trails on the in the trails in the back because you would have wanted to you weren't you didn't, you weren't gonna have keys to a car you're just running for your life you were gonna yeah. run away from the cars and you were gonna run away to the quickest way out and that seems that the the direction that they were running to is towards the trails that they already knew existed and they already knew they were there right and you would have right. been on yeah it's, it makes and complete like- sense where the bodies are now. Right. And up until now, up until, well, this moment of us explaining this, you could be like, okay, well, that's all well and good for like you guys speculating and it's saying it in a book. But, but then a guy named Marty sent us a, here, I'll just read, I'll read this post that was put in our, uh, our Facebook page. And this is the document that kind of sealed the deal for us. Um, So a few years ago, I stumbled on the below property receipt on the internet. And so he sent this property receipt. Um, This set of steak knives was reportedly given to Roman and Sharon as a wedding gift. I took a photo and planned on looking into it further, but never got around to it. They were found at 11 p.m. on 8-10-69, less than 48 hours after the murders, in the bushes at the intersection of Angelo and, quote, Sunnyvale. I could not find Sunnyvale intersection or intersecting with Angelo. However, there is a Sunbrook Drive. I bet this sounds familiar, especially to Beckham. Who stashed them and when, at least with the path leading from the Cielo House to Sunbrook, we know the route they most likely took. Another thing that puzzles me about this receipt is why it indicates the property was taken into custody at 2774 Woodstock Road, Abigail and Voitek's house on 8, 
eleven sixty nine at one thirty p.m. The only logistical explanation is it's where Bel Air Patrol, who found the knives, handed them over to police, which makes sense. And I will uh, get this uh, put up on screen and share it so everybody can see. Ta -ta 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 -ta. So this is what he's talking about. It says uh, steak knives and box. Regent Sheffield brown plastic handles found at Angelo and Sunnyvale by Harvey Street. Or, yeah, Harvey Street, Jean Bel Air, Air Patrol. Handled by Captain John Hawkins, Bel Air Patrol, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so that there goes to show us that, yeah, there was a um yeah there was a trail yeah they knew it was there and if there was drug dealing going on there it makes more sense that people would be coming up the yeah. back way than going in through the front gate and parking you... and all that kind of stuff dude mm -hmm. i was well, they had these parties where i was like where are they parking i mean i, was, I still think that's a thing but you know mm -hmm. i think the only and so this is just this is purely speculation from me but this is so that was debunked. They thought that that was the case, but that that was debunked. It was her, one of her aliases had the same initials as a friend of Gary, or of not fucking Gary Hinman's, too many names, uh, of Gerritsen's. So uh, what I think happened with Gerritsen, which makes sense to me, coupled with the, the fact that the dogs weren't barking, and if there's screaming and murder and shooting and running and all that sort of stuff, and there's dogs on the property, get fucked. There's not oh, going to yeah. be any barking, right? Like, no way. To me, yeah, that proves that Garrettson probably wasn't there. Yeah. he. So what I'm thinking happened is where the back, where the, uh, it looks like the trail was, was near the guest house. Now, so this is my speculation again. Um, that parent and Garretson come out of the house. Garretson, like, see you later, takes the dogs, goes down the trail, and takes Sunbrook down to wherever. Uh, Stephen Parent's going by the house, sees whatever he saw, however he saw, and uh, and that's why he ended up where he was. Now, I think that later on, um, Garretson ended up there, and well, hid in his, point, hid in Paul, his house to <laughs> somehow. Point, yeah. To your point about, about Garrettson walking, um, I'm sorry, parent walking by. There's, an, of course, with the limited pictures that that there that are that are out there. There is one particular picture that I found interesting. Um, was the one that is seen as a as a detective was probably making the walk that parent made along mm -hmm. that little side, you know, trail. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. the detective takes a picture of of the of walking, but like say he's looking towards the house, right? So so of course it's like the detective made the walk. Oh, okay, this is where this, somebody probably walked through, you know, here, and then you know either they're, they're taking pictures of everything, right? So to your point, that's what probably the detective was taking the picture of, because from that from that point of view, as if like parent would have made the walk towards his car as he was leaving the prop, you know, the property. Yeah, I don't think he hid in the trail. I think he walked down the trail with the dogs and was gone. I think it takes like fuck all time to get down that hill and then you go. Now everything's yeah. happening above yep. him, right? Right. Yep. Unless he might have not been able. Well, he might have, depending on where if he was. He's those other the two way, guys heard it. The other two, but they. But we don't but know. They exactly. were in the trail, apparently. Right, they were like in the trail, them. but off to the side in the woods a little bit because mm -hmm. they, you know, you weren't going. They weren't going to be having the sex on the trail. They would have been in no, no, no sets on steak knife trail. <laughs> That's too bad. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Garrettson also said there was like a three-eyed baby, so you can't really. You got to kind of go with. The, he's a traumatized kid. He walked back to that house after, and there were fucking dead people everywhere. Like, and then they he got taken to jail. 
and then all the stuff happened, whatever, that we have no idea what happened. His fucking brain was can probably you, broken. Have you, you ever seen have, the pictures of him? Oof. Sorry, do you, do you still have yeah. that picture, that thing by acapella? The, oh, the no, not on I here. Kept it. Hold on. Um, Let me, I'll look for it. Hold on. Let me see if I have it. Because I, I want to see how far the house was from where from where um Voitech and Abigail ended up on the yard, you know, in the in the property. Hold on one second. I'll look for it and see if I still have it. I don't think it was like a crazy steep, scary trail like that. I don't think no, it was anything mm -hmm. like that. I think it was just like take the dogs down this way. Paul, what's that? Paul, if if okay, so I'm gonna send you this. If if he had been if Gar if Garretson had been away from the trail, he comes back up to the back of the pool house. Say he comes in through the back, he mm -hmm. might not have seen the bodies on in the in the yard. Right. Possible. He might not even have known anything happened. I'll show you. Here, let me send it to you. It stayed. He stayed. Okay, Mr. Fitzgerald Garretson. He stated in connection with questions about the dog barking that quote it was about two or three hours after he left, referring to Stephen Parent. Let me send you this real quick. Hold on. You can see the back. The he might have gone through the back door of the pool of the pool house. I mean, the pool house looks kind of big, man, for a pool house. Well, yeah. for a rich celebrity. Yeah, it looks pretty big, man. Like, like I've had, I've known people that have had like pool houses and they're kind of like one bed, like really small one bedroom apartments or, you know, pretty small. This looks bigger than that. Than the ones I've been in. Right. Um, especially if he goes into the guest house via the back south door. Apparently that house had a door on each four sides. There you oh, go. Wow. There it is. Get that up then. Oh, dude, the house was two thousand square feet. Holy shit! It was a big fucking house, man. Holy crap! Again, dude. celebrities. <laughs> dude, then he yeah. could have gone. Dude, he might not even have seen them, dude. For yeah. real, look at that picture. Then he gets woken up by the cops. Yeah, exactly. Like, that. That. Holy yeah, that shit! I never sense. thought about that. So this is acapella. This is oh, this is our shit, guy here. Dude, he might not and even he, have fucking known. He made this. So this is. I know you can make you, uh, red you path to the get. guest house. That's as big as I can get it for now. Okay. Um, <laughs> green. <laughs> All right, that was kind of funny. That's yeah, fair. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> that was good, <laughs> Daniel. That was good when your little laugh. <laughs> um. I did. Dude, that he time. he okay. could have literally. I'll have to try. That makes complete sense, Paul. Way. He could have came back up the trail, gone through the back door of that big ass pool house. Uh, fuck that. That's a whole nother little house back there, dude. Mm -hmm. And he might not never known anything. Not and that kind of puts it to him not knowing shit about anything. Maybe that's right. why he was able to pass or sort of. Pretty much, pretty much past the lie detector. Pretty much, like ninety percent of it. Right, because um, he didn't see anything. He, he didn't just fucking didn't see dead. nothing. He didn't fucking have a clue what happened. Right, he would have been, and then he would have been freaked went... out. Like literally, if they woke him up and he didn't know nothing, he's like, "What the fuck?" And he walks out the door. They he they made him walk across the yard at that point. Right. Right. And they're yeah. like, did you do this? Did you, you know, blah, blah, blah. and he's getting, he's 18 years old. Did his mind is probably scattered at that oh, point. Oh, it probably snapped. It probably, yeah. as soon what as he the saw them dead he, there and like. They literally walked yeah. him across the dead bodies, right? Or mm -hmm. they, you know, they might've been covered, but. Probably they, stuck they, his fucking face in it like a dog, probably. basically. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Dude, even if they had covered, let's say they gave the victims some sense yeah. of decency and cover them with a cloth. There's still blood everywhere. So there's no getting around. There's a horrific scene, even if he did not see the bodies themselves while he was being led by police. 
Yeah, well, um, Flores, Devi, yeah, I mean, they 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 weren't sure about his his lie detector. They was probably like, they they probably had bumps in it, but they kind of just still, you know, they could lie tell. Lie detectors they are could, not reliable. They could tell that this kid had no idea what the fuck he was doing. I mean, they they could literally see him and just be like, oh, he's eighteen. Don't know what the fuck he's gonna. He's not gonna kill five fucking people. He probably could barely right. tie his fucking shoes. Corey asks a question. No, I'm just, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I know what you mean. Beckham, have you seen a video tour of the house? No, but I could probably go get. I could probably put in that I want to buy it. <laughs> go get a free <laughs> tour. <laughs> That'd be dope. I'd have to lie um, my ass off about about you LLCs have like and a business venture. Thirty-two thousand. You have to have like thirty-two thousand dollars a month or something for your to buy it that's a lot of resi oh, you know residual money coming through man that's yeah. that's movie making money that's just coming in that that's what that is right or you have other uh capital that's just coming in from other businesses it's just cash flow that's what pays for those houses what the fuck lost permission to capture your screen i don't know it's being fucking weird i hate computers um, I don't know why it's not letting me show this thing. Um, it's like, go to settings, do all this stuff, and they like, blow it out your ass. I would it's be like willing to bet. And you know, you know, guys, I don't bet on, I don't bet on stuff. I would put money yeah. down and he had no idea what happened. He didn't see it. He might right. have just heard something here and there, but probably like, ah, oh, it's whatever. Mm -hmm. I wonder. Hold on here. Let me try something quick. And then if not, and then I give up on computer and it can go fuck itself. Yeah, Corey, if you could post a link, that would be awesome. Zero. I just thought it was like a normal little pool house, you know, kind of like a one bedroom, a living room, and just a closet or something. Something, mm -hmm. you know, something, you know, like a pool house. So Anastasia makes a, an interesting point here. I wish they'd ask more questions in the parole hearings that all these blogs, YouTube channels bring up. It's not right. going to happen because if you think about it, oh, here, well, here's my two cents, right? It's not going to happen. Hey, hey, Bill, um, because obviously someone like Stephen K, like he's going to go with Bugs's rendition of why oh yeah dude I, i'm seeing that video of uh of what the cory just posted yeah he could have he could have seriously they look like i don't know if we can play it here paul my computer's being a son of a bitch i don't even but, want to try right now. <laughs> but holy crap there's a lot of space between the main house the pool and then the the pool house there's a lot of there's a lot of real estate between 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 the two speaking of a lot of space let me get back to my point so there was yes yeah, so stephen k is going to go after and rehash again all the reasons why they were found guilty and why they need to stay in jail right and if you think about it in order to be eligible for parole we had we had talked about this prior on a another show but we you know we've talked about it here on another ones too that they, you know, for example, Patricia Krenwinkel, Leslie Van Houten, they have to go along with the narrative in order to try to get parole. If they come in saying that didn't happen, here's another story, it, they're not going to get parole. So they're going to stick with, yes, this happened. Yes, you know, Charles Manson influenced me, so on and so forth, so that they can then try to get eligible for parole. So I get what you're saying, Anastasia, but it's it's not really going to happen. For the mostly, in my opinion, for those two reasons. Um, for this question, can I say how could he not hear this? One sec. Uh, how could he not hear the down the trails? Um, because it depends on when the screaming happened, where he was, what he was doing. Um, who knows well, when he got home? Go well, ahead. what I was going to say is on the other side, where this, you know, uh, down the street, at the bottom of the street, it's where. Cielo, where you start up the street, you can't hear shit down there, dude. I don't know why you just can't. You can't. And you'll see well, right at the go. bottom of the hill. If there's sound right above you, it'll shoot over you and bounce off the right. thing and come right. back to you. 
right. if you're in a gully, it, the sound is fucking weird and you can't right. tell where it's coming from either. That's the other thing too, mm -hmm. is if he heard something, like it could have just been, he had no idea where it was coming from. I worked in, in this, like in this actual gully and uh, they were doing blasting on one side of us and it sounded like it was coming from the other side and it would just bounce. The sound just bounces around and it wouldn't get to you until just after. And it wasn't like right. that, that far away. It's just, you're so low, so much lower. Some people did hear him screaming. Um, I'm not sure where the, but the thing is that there's a lot of houses in line with them up there. The sound would bounce. People heard screaming, but it <clears> wasn't, <throat> a, I don't think it was, and I'll check it out too, but I don't think that it was from, like, they were like, we heard screaming from Cielo. It was no, like, they were like screaming. That. Yeah, it was just in general, around. right? Yeah. Yeah. And here's another point, guys. When we went and checked out the yeah. fire, the fire, the, the trails this over the summer, me, Sadie and I, um, mm -hmm. it took three, it took about close anywhere from two to four minutes to drive. This is driving, not walking, just for driving from the bottom of Cielo over mm -hmm. to where the back trail would have ended up. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you are in a completely I'm going to say this again. You are in a completely different landscape where the trail ended up or the cul-de-sac. It's not the same. I mean, I'm talking like right. you are. Cielo was way up here at the end of the cul-de-sac, at the end of the, where their trail would have been. It was down here. I mean, you are completely in a different landscape, which, again, the sound stuff, if you needed to get away, you could have gotten away. And the police would have never have known where the hell you were because you are a completely different area of you know of the of the canyon seriously and that's kind of mm -hmm. odd and weird but unless you've been there you you kind of it's kind of hard to picture that in your head right <laughs> wait the killers could hear cocktail shakers from down the canyon but <laughs> garrison right. couldn't hear screaming yeah that's hilarious Perfect. you're right some of the houses were built after mm -hmm. right yeah Oh my God, the cocktail shaker. I seriously can't. That's the, yeah, yeah. Oh it's a God. great line, though. I, I yeah. I'd give him that. That's a oh, great sure. line to start the book with. It's a entertaining book. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a fucking really entertaining book. It's right. just fucking That's crazy. a good line to start the book with. That, that was, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. It's all fucking orgies and murder. This is fucking crazy. That's what got Paul in the case. <laughs> It was. It was. Oh, oh, it's, he, oh, it's a stolen line. Oh shit! I thought he came up with it. At least, damn. I'm... <laughs> Probably took it from Ivor Davis or whatever. You fucking. Yeah, good point, Sam. Mm. Toilets were flushing. Oh my god, that whole. <laughs> <laughs> that's from no. That's from uh, that's from chaos. Wow, the fucking trails are taking a while. This is a good one. We're gonna have three shows out of this fucking list, dude. Just wait till you go. Just wait till you visit. You're gonna. I'm telling you, your mind is gonna be like, whoa, what the f? Well, if you th think about it, we didn't know about the trails for so long, and then once we learned about it, it's like, no, Holy I know, shit. it just blew. It, just it. it makes a lot of sense, right? Mm -hmm. Things yeah. are th things start to connect when you know about the back trail, dude. You start connecting everything where the bodies were laying, why they were there. Now, get Garrettson most likely didn't know shit went down, right? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. you know the, the confidence that it gave the killers to go back or or just to go up there. Period. Because you would have mm -hmm. you could have ran away from police if you heard familiarity. The what they're from, talking yeah, about? They already knew. Or hey, Delinda. What's I'm sorry. Tex probably I'm, I'm sure Tex knew about the trail. He lived there. Right. Yeah, fuck rights. And it's so funny there, too. Dude. It's like when Melcher's like, oh, you know, I met Tex like five times or something. It's like, but then I let him and him and his buddy take my car and my card to go and pick some stuff up. Okay. Yeah, the trails hey, are huge, hey Mark. And they're huge to the case. They there's like, a house. Like there, yeah, there's there. houses now. They've just added a whole bunch of color to it. It's like on Minesweeper when you hit the fucking thing and it's just like Grr. that's what the trails were because it it fills in a bunch of holes. Yep. 
It does. And we've 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 talked about that on this show, on this show right here. Mm hmm. Um, yeah. So what time are we at? 10 after we have time for one or two more, I guess. Does anybody else want to have anything to add with the uh, trail stuff before we move along? Dude, Tex had to have known about the trails. He lived there. For sure. But could Cass Elliott have made it up that trail? <laughs> oh, okay. There's probably a lot of cocaine. I bet she could have. Show her a ham sandwich up there getting made. No. Um, the So the, you know, I'm it's crazy. Playing. I'm just playing. I was looking at the, I know, I was looking at the, oh, is it? Fuck, I looked at so much today. I was looking at something today and it was talking about Oh, how much how much drugs were there and there was more drugs found at cielo than i thought and i'm gonna look up that stuff again and, and bring it in for next time yeah exactly yeah <laughs> um i feel old because i have no idea what it's like on minesweeper when you hit on the thing that's hilarious because i feel old because i'm talking about minesweeper Delinda, I think the reason they didn't use the trail to begin with is because you always had people coming up the trail. Right. As opposed to the street. Maybe it's, maybe a couple of them went up the trail and a couple of them went through the front. We don't know. That's right. They could have gone. And and, and remember, the sergeant, the lead, the, the, the lead detective believed there was two men and three women, not not. Uh, the other way, not one guy and three women. Yeah. If we're going down speculation station, yeah, then uh, imagine the two of them come in the front, and right? Two in the like back. that are getting drugs, and two of them, because there's that removed, um, she, we, we don't that know, removed yeah. screen. Right. So two of them go in the back to yep. go and check the rest of the house while they're keeping the people at the front. Anyway, who knows, man? Yeah, that's and that's true. Just... They needed to cut the phone lines in the front, apparently, too. Speaking mm -hmm. of two in the front, two in the back, like and subscribe whoa, to Beckham whoa. after dark. I'll make you happy. Don't say that. <laughs> I'm your huckleberry. Um. <laughs> yes. Oh, you said it with that old man pervert voice from the from the show. The family guy. I'll be your huckleberry, <laughs> sweet little bastard. Um, Delinda. Oh wow. Delinda said Tex had a stroke and can't talk. On the 12th, he had a stroke. Shit. <gasps> well, release the text tapes. <laughs> Let that do Ooh, the talking for hey. him. <laughs> She's a nice lady. <laughs> Can he write? Dude. <laughs> okay, so does his if he if okay, I have a question that maybe you can ask, Paul. What happens mm. if he goes into a coma state? Can Who? they get the Tex. Tex? No, because he's still alive. Okay, so he's got to be deceased in order. But to... it was okay, a, got... it was the part of it was a part of somebody else's because Tex signed over his rights, mm. I believe, to that guy who died, and okay. then Tom O'Neill was supposed to get the right. Tex okay. tapes, but then it got all fucked up in the uh, estate. So I don't think it's actually up to Tex if the if the tapes go out. Um, let's see. Interesting. Dude, this, oh man, with what the doctor told us about the blood, there is no timeline. There, I'm sorry, no. there just isn't. You just can't go with, you can't go with Helter Skelter's timeline. No. Well, that goes without saying. Well, the only thing I would say about that, the timeline that he established is the clock or the what did it or the when did it when did it go off or the time or whatever because of the power oh right that would be the only thing that's right in that timeline would be that but how long but you don't know what you don't know if they hung around if they talked for well 15 minutes if, screens, if they you talked hear for the 30 shots yeah you just don't know right but you yeah you have no idea if they were there beforehand at all what sure was going of course on. Right. Yeah. Was the was the cut wire because things were moved around? Was the cut wire part of the fucking trying to frame people? Like yeah. was um let's see. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'd imagine so. Um, yeah, you did send that while uh, Phillips on Bob Costa show. In that video, he never mentions going to Cielo, but he says that Voitech came to his house yeah. two times and was turned away. Dude, I mm -hmm. wish we could get the phone records, but I mean, I wish. Yeah, never I want to see. Happen. I know. I wish. I want to see who called Cielo or who called Cielo that drive. I mean, that drive that day. So I'm with Delinda. Uh, another thing that should have been looked at much more closely, the wire cable from Sebring's house listed in the Cielo property mm. report. Weird. Wow. Really? Obviously, the people actually investigating the crime scene thought it was potentially related to Cielo murders and relevant. Mm. Is that, are you talking about Acapella? Are you talking about the one that Tom O'Neill talked about with the, uh, with the guy who, who uh, the cable thing? Is that what you're talking about? <clears throat> Sorry, my I haven't talked very much in the last few days, so my voice is like fucking dying. You sound like you always do anyway. That's good. Yeah, Paul Greenwald. Well, that's interesting. Acapella, can you send that to us? Could you know where that is? Like, can you get a picture of that and send that to us? Where that's written down? Because that's really, 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 really interesting. And that's really, really big. Because that's that's it on a. Because there's the the guy saying it, but then that's it written down on something as well. So that's a that's a good twofer. I want to have George Stimson on again, and I want to have like a stump the stimp, and just have everybody give me all their stuff. That's like this is why it has to be like this. Thank you, Acapella. Are but you I on still, our, I mean, are I you still... on our Facebook group? If not, I will get the. Uh, I was say, Paul, I'll drop your get email. the link. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here's my email. Yeah, yeah, do that. Um. So yeah, Delinda makes a good. I'm with Delinda on this question because I, you know, who is to say Tex told any truth at all in the tapes? Maybe it's lies. Exactly. Yeah, that's the other thing. Could all be bullshit. No, of course. Yeah. Delinda, get the text tapes. <laughs> <laughs> it's also spoken about in the Sebring documentary. Wow. I was too um, distracted when I watched the Sebring documentary. Totally. And the other thing that goes along with that, and that it wasn't just random. They had been, they knew what yep. they were doing. I think so. Um, the mm -hmm. other thing too is when they washed up at the house right near Jay Sebring's house. Why'd they wash up at the house near the Jay Sebring's? Probably going to wash up, go over there and fucking try and find something. Well, Wagstaff, um, I just want to say, I take everything with a grain of salt. To me, things need to be, it needs to be proven. So just like any, you know, even if like Leslie Van Houten came forward with something or Patricia Kremwinkle, it's, I'm going to listen to it and absorb it, but take it with a grain of salt and go from there. All criminals are innocent. Um, I wonder if there was an upside down Olympia beer can by the cut wires at Sebring's as well. I find that beer can odd by the cut wires. Oh, that's, yeah, that's interesting. Mm. Probably one of the cops was just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> um, um, oh, Delinda, that one stuck out to her too. I have to look back at that. Uh, picture now you see that beer can it's conceivable that the all the killers are dead in the next five years or so for sure yeah man well like bobby's got like one lung now bobby beausoleil he's he's doing better now though they got the uh family his family finally got word like it's like don't 
Like, whatever he did, don't take it out on the family. Why do they have to fucking worry about him? I know, that's like, horrible. Give him the heads up that he's, like, alive. They didn't even know. I, Ivan didn't even know, like, what was going on with him for so long. It's crazy. That's crazy. Um, probably a cop left it there. See, that's a, it's so funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, wow. If John Phillips drank that kind of beer, that's interesting. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people did. Um, well, was it your old like Miller Light, Budweiser, Bud Light? No, it said it's. Uh, <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> what, what the fuck did they say? Olympia, Olympia yeah. beer. I have no idea. All right, what do you got, Delinda? Something hit you about? Bring it on, Delinda. Bring it on. Um. You know, it's fucked about the blood the drip. Cat. There's blood drip on it. Mm -hmm. Where's do I have that picture on here still of them sitting on it? No, that's so crazy. Sue's fucking Sue's though, but keeps all the uh, bloody furniture. Thanks, Clifford. Rudy Altabelli. Okay, Bill says it was popular beer back at that time. Hmm. In March, Roman posed on the couch, tan animal fur on back of couch. Crime scene, it's moved left end of the couch. Flag is in its place. Also, zebra rug on four. Dead animals. Get it? I mean, I guess so. I don't know. I don't know if that one sticks out as much as other things for me, but anything's possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, should we... Do I guess it's 21 after. Holy cow. Well, it's done the whole thing. So why don't we keep the rest of what we're doing? Oh, and we'll squeeze a whole nother show out of this. <laughs> yeah, no, these are great points. And we don't want to rush a lot of them just for the sake of being like, come on, let's wrap this up. Because there's some great conversation when we can have that needs to be had about some other points. So mm -hmm. we'll and do a part three. Yeah, and I mean, there's more There's more things than just these. These were the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. And so there's different stuff. Yeah, different stuff to figure out. Although technically the points we talked about tonight were the stuff that came from my head. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, so if anybody has, again, we're going to do a part three because there's still some points that we need to talk about. But if there's any points that you guys think of hey auntie oh hey God, auntie a long time to see um leave a comment in because this will stay up so leave a comment and if there's something that you know we sh think we need to uh oh, what the hell what no shush <laughs> just ignore me <laughs> oh my god i can't um talk about put it put a comment on this video so yeah and we have some interesting stuff coming up for y'all so things in the works. And before we go, I also have to say thank you to Pauline Butcher, who sent me her book, Freak Out, My Life with Frank Zappa, Laurel Canyon, 1968 to 1971. And she signed it. And it's a fucking fantastic book. And check out the uh, interview we did with her as well. Um, it's Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to reading this one because it's the updated version. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, and like Paul said, we have some stuff in the works, and we have a very cool announcement coming soon. So stay tuned. Yeah, and yeah, thank you everybody for uh, coming. Great, more show, guitar man. video, <laughs> more guitar videos. Fuck yeah! All right, buddy, I'll I'll get there. I'm getting there. Um, yeah, thank you guys very much. Good show. Thank you to my co-hosts. Good show. And uh, we will talk to you all sooner than later. Updated version. Zappa's still dead. <laughs> all right. See you, everybody. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye.